So I've just got another video in this series of experiments I'm doing measuring gravity at different latitudes around the Earth and also onboard aircraft. And this time it's on the flight going from Sydney up to Broome. So essentially westbound. I tried to get most of the uh, video during the earlier part of the flight when we were just at the uh, the lower latitudes around the uh, the 30 south latitude position. And we were predominantly heading um, probably west northwest. So there was a lot of westerly component in the flight. Now, if you remember my previous flight from Perth to Sydney, because we were moving eastbound and the aircraft speed was being added to the rotation of the Earth, the centrifugal force generated resulted in a lighter weight on the scales. And uh, in that previous video, the average weight on the scales was about 495 grams. Now, this weight was uh, calibrated in Perth to be precisely 500.00 grams. So there was a 5 gram difference, about 1% difference, when we were flying eastbound from Perth at about 550 knots ground speed. Now, when we are flying in the opposite direction, we are going to expect that the weight will be heavier because now we're flying opposite to the Earth's rotation, there's going to be a reduction in the centrifugal force generated. So uh, let's just take a look at uh, a calculator and we'll also have a look at some of the other factors involved. So at this point, I just want to give a shout out to uh, Walter Bislin, who has posted uh, several comments on, on my videos over the past months. And uh, I really appreciate his fantastic work in uh, generating this calculator because it was in relation to one of my previous videos where I was showing the G meter on board the aircraft um, indicating 0.99 G as we were traveling east at high speed with a strong tailwind. And what uh, Walter has done, it's really, I mean, I can't praise his work enough. This is just an outstanding calculator that we can now use to predict the uh, the weights as we're flying anywhere around the earth. And uh, let me just take you through it very briefly. But basically we've got the, the ground speed of the aircraft. We've got the latitude that the aircraft is flying at. He's added recently um, the calibration location. So because I calibrated this uh, weight in Perth, it's 32 south latitude, and the weight was 500 grams. So that you can actually even put in the position where you calibrated the scales, which is just superb. You then put in the course of the aircraft, the altitude, the altitude where the weight was calibrated, and it gives you a lot of information. Now, we're going to go through some of the variables here, but the, the key figure that we're after is this one right here, just over here, the little WH, because that's the weight that we're going to expect to see on the scales, if all the math is correct. Now, let me just put in the values for that first flight, 41,000 feet. We were flying approximately east, the latitude was 34, that was from the GPS on the, uh, on the phone app. 550 knots is the speed. The unit was calibrated in uh, Perth, 32 south latitude, 500 grams. So what we would expect to see on the scales in this situation is 495 grams. Now I think you'll all agree that even though there was minor fluctuations in the scale from micro turbulence uh, while we were flying, the uh, scars were averaging around 495 grams. Now, flying westbound, we will expect to see a heavier weight on the scale. So let's just take a look at the figures from, uh, from my flight so we can predict what we will expect to see. Ground speed was about 430 knots. The latitude was around 30 south latitude. We weren't going directly west. We were going more close to about 280, so slightly uh, north of uh, directly west. In fact, let's be more conservative and put it at 290. And we were only at 33,000 feet. So let's take a look. Now, as I said, the key figure that we're after is this one here. So it's showing us that the weight on the scales should now be indicating 499 grams average okay and what you'll see in the video is that is actually the case and uh, I'll play that video shortly but before I do I just want to address some of the uh, other points that were raised by people on my first video 
So before playing the actual in-flight video, I'll just scroll down in Walter's uh, calculator because he has addressed many of the variables that were raised in comments on my initial video. And they're listed here in order of uh, decreasing effect. Obviously the force of gravity is the most significant force. The speed and direction of the aircraft has the maximum effect on the change in the apparent weight on the scales. Okay, so that's going to be um, one of the factors. Now, the other factors that were raised were the altitude of the aircraft. Yes, certainly the higher we go, the lower the force of gravity, but by repeating the experiment going east and west, we're basically eliminating that variable because in both situations, the aircraft was above 30,000 feet. So the effect of altitude is going to be similar in both situations. The air density, also a very small factor, as you can see there, the actual variation is, is quite tiny and would not even register on my scales. But looking at uh, it in the experiment uh, context, the air density was about the same on both flights because the aircraft are pressurized to about six to 7,000 feet cabin altitude. So air density is uh, essentially similar on both um, the eastbound and the westbound flight. The other points that were raised was the tidal effect of the sun and the moon and the earth going around its orbit, which uh, side of the earth was facing the sun. And once again, you can see the value of those forces is so small, it's just a tiny fraction that would not even register as 0.01 on the scale. So the sun and the moon tidal forces are quite insignificant in this experiment. The air density is very small and also negated by the fact that uh, it's applicable in both scenarios going east and west. The altitude similarly is uh, more of a factor, but again, negated by the fact that we're in an aircraft in both experiments going east and also going west. So really it boils down to the major difference that we're going to see in this uh, video that I'm about to play is due to the direction of the aircraft, okay? When it was going east, we were seeing about 495 grams average. When it's going west, we're seeing 499 grams average. And that's exactly what the calculator predicts we're going to see. So this is confirming the um, motion of the aircraft going east results in a lighter weight than when the aircraft is going west. Not by a small amount, but by four grams. You know, it's basically almost 1% of the weight of the object. So that's a fairly significant change. And as I said, this is just part of an ongoing series of experiments, but so far, all the results are matching to the mathematics of the um, globe and the centrifugal force being generated by the aircraft moving east and moving west. So let's play the video. So the first thing I did before getting on the flight, on the westbound flight, was just assess the scales again. Remember in Sydney it was showing 500.07 grams. That was several weeks ago now. And uh, what I did just before getting on the flight is I tested it again to see if it was consistent. So that'll be the first thing you see, 500.07 grams. We'll see if the scales were consistently showing that before the flight. So I'm just at the Qantas Club Lounge at Sydney Airport prior to getting on my westbound flight. Let's test these scales again.